Welcome back to Beagle Eye Visions Internet. We are on episode number 13 of the Cubbyhole Podcast. It's called The Hermetic Principles. And if you're familiar with the channel, if you watched the book review that we did on the Kai Balian, um, this episode will tie in right with that and it'll give you a solid foundation on under understanding this top these topics. Um, I also want to give a shout out to the line of epic heroes on their uh, their YouTube channel. They play a lot of Titan Quest and do a lot of grinding and they even get they've been getting deep recently on some of their live streams. They talk about Greek uh, the the Greek language and they started getting into philosophy. But so like I said, this is the 13th episode. Thank you for joining us and um, yeah, let's get some knowledge. And that's one of the things about religion that we have to remember when we're talking about that makes it such a, a hot topic issue. It's because we're talking about law. Who gets to be God? Who gets to be God's deputies? Who is the most high? Who is the divine authority? It's all about the claim to the most high. The only way that somebody can be higher than us is if we give away our power. Because there's nobody, we're all equal. But we're not equal in our knowledge, so ultimately, I think it does have to be a hierarchy, but it has to be a cooperative hierarchy, like a bee colony. We have to about what our value system is, what we care about. mind today is july 23rd 2020 i am your host nate cap joined by co-host brandon martin welcome to the 13th cubbyhole podcast where important topics are unveiled discussed and tested our website is cubbyhole.com that's c-u-b-b-y-w-h-o-l-e.com on this show we will be reading and demonstrating the governing principles of natural law. Brandon, thanks for being on the show again, man. You're very welcome, Nate. You're very welcome, Nate. <laughs> that was uh, that was amazing little pause there. Uh, and that's because I had you on mute and I had to okay. say it twice. <laughs> that's cool. No, it's all good. All good. Uh, thank you for having me back on to the Cubbyhole podcast, and I'm excited to get into these principles with you, Nate. Yeah, man. Um, this is definitely uh, some of the, the the goods of understanding natural law. So before we go any further, what is a principle? You know, let's let's un let's first understand that word principle and where it comes from, which, you know. In, in Latin, the, the noun principia means first, foremost, leading, chief, and most necessary. So basically, principle or principles uh, means first things, like first things first. And this is something that I feel does not seem to be understood by most people. And you'll know when people aren't principled because they get caught up in the effects or, uh, or trivial things in life. They, they don't show signs of care about first things, a.k.a. principles. So principles are that which is most important. And why is this? Why would principles be more important than family or friends or relationships and I know that sounds a little cold but the reason is because without principles relationships fall apart friendships uh, you know anything with the family if you don't have the principles um, you don't have a sturdy foundation to grow from so Natural law is governed by principles. These principles don't require belief, and more importantly, they are definitely meant to be understood and then applied. 
Brandon and I are going to read these seven principles off plus the eighth hidden principle. Uh, understanding these principles grants a master key through which universal wisdom can be unveiled or de-occulted. These principles are in order, starting with the principle of mentalism, which is the first principle. The second principle is the principle of correspondence. The third is the principle of vibration. Fourth, the principle of polarity. Fifth, the principle of rhythm. Sixth, the principle of cause and effect. Seven, the principle of gender plus the hidden eighth principle, which is the generative principle, which we will cover at the end. These principles are discoverable and part of the sacred high science, which I feel is best referenced in the book called the, Ka the Kybalion by the three initiates. In the Kybalion, these principles are known as the hermetic principles and hermetic in the sense of uh, secret sealed or um, so that nothing can escape hermetically sealed means binding principles that are immutable like natural law and hermetic comes from hermes the the scribe of the gods known as hermes tris majestus or the thrice great also known as the master of masters he was the father of the occult wisdom the founder of astrology and the discoverer of alchemy. The Egyptians deified Hermes and made him one of their gods under the name of Thoth as the messenger of wisdom and later was called Hermes, the god of wisdom by the ancient Greeks. So when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Yes, Hermes is one of my favorite archetypal you know, characters when it comes to the Egyptian and the Greek mythology. Uh, he is related to Mercury, which is an alchemical element, but also it is the closest planet to the sun, which means that he is the messenger of the truth because the sun is symbolic of the truth or God or the divine knowledge or the light and he is the closest to the sun which spins the quickest around the sun so you know he's the one who delivers the message down to the other uh to the other planets including us and so that's why he's associated with angelic properties usually being with wings so you get characters like in marvel or i mean actually characters like in dc uh flash who has the lightning bolt which is very symbolic of the Ka the kabbalah the lightning bolt the lightning bolt path and he also has wings on his shoes or on his helmet in a lot of depictions of flash and that's quicksilver also in the marvel universe you have quicksilver and quicksilver is also associated with alchemical transmutation and things of this sort so hermes is the messenger of what i like to call green language and natural law because he brings the emerald tablets he is the reader and the scribe of the emerald tablets and the emerald tablets are the occult workings of the universe the occult workings of the self and what i mean by that is the hidden sciences that are discoverable and knowable by spiritual beings here he's also symbolized uh, with the caduceus which is the the medical symbol of the double helix serpents that are going up around the rod with the, the feathers and the wings at the top of the rod so that's about the kundalini energy raising into its highest aspect taking something from the low and raising it into the high the serpent becoming the eagle uh, like the the eagle swooping down and picking up the serpent off the ground like the ancients would see it in the past or totemic societies and totemic people would see it and when that happened it would be symbolic of raising consciousness from a lower a lower place into a higher place so that's symbolic of enlightenment and becoming aware self-aware becoming in tune and aligning with that which is so 
you'll see that Hermes, like Nate said, is the Egyptian deity Thoth, and that is a bird, obviously. I think it's a stork or or um, what, what's that bird it's called? A water, Nate, you remember? It's a oh. it's a a waterfowl. Waterfowl. That's right. It's the waterfowl. So you will often see Hermes uh, symbolized with the waterfowl, and then you'll also see him symbolized with a dog or a companion. But in the Egyptian mythology, it's a waterfowl. That, that's the anthropomorphic archetypal symbol that they use uh, for Hermes. And then moving into the Greek, you have man's best friend, which is the, which is the dog. So I feel like the messenger becomes man's best friend because it associates the idea that man's best friend is that which teaches us the principles of natural law, that which teach, teaches us the principles of of the universe and and of ourselves so the principles of truth are seven he who knows these understandingly possessed the key the magic key before whose all touch the doors of the temple fly open i think i said that wrong but that's a kaibalion quote the principles of truth are seven he who knows these understandingly possessed the magic key before those before whose touch all the doors of the temple fly open. That's what it is. And what this is talking about is the, the seven hermetic principles. And this can also be related back to the Vedic tradition of the seven chakra system. And we talk a lot about the seven here on the cubbyhole because it directly has to do with the stellar cult and the, the, uh, the mystery schools when it comes to the seven. So the seven is very important to understand. So I'm very happy to actually start to explain a few of these principles here. Um, so I'm going to start off and explain the principle of mentalism for people. And I hope this helps people to understand how the universe works when it comes to how we create things and how we um, get the conditions uh, that we are getting and how we can get the conditions that we say we want. So the principle of mentalism states the all is mind. The universe is mental. This principle embodies the truth that the all is mind. It explains that the all, which is the substantial reality underlying all the outward manifestations and appearances, which we know under the term of the material universe, the, the, phenomenal, the phenomenon of life, matter, energy, and in short, all that is apparent to our material senses is spirit or is mental, which in itself is unknowable and undefinable, but which we may be considered and th but which may be considered and thought of as a universal infinite living mind. It also explains that the phenomenal world or universe is simply a mental creation of the all, subject to the laws of created things, and that the universe as a whole and in its parts or units has its existence in the mind of the all, in which the mind we live in move and have our being. So this principle, by establishing the mental nature of the universe, easily explains all of the varied mental and psychic phenomena that occupy such a large portion of the public's attention and which, without such an explanation, are not understandable. So what this is saying is that we cannot really make sense of the world that we're living in without doing it through the mind without understanding the principle of mentalism and understanding of this great principle of mentalism enables an individual to readily grasp the laws of the mental universe and apply the same to that well-being and advancement of our of our beings and of our society so you know this really is the first thing that we need to get a grip on is that all things are created from the mind. 
causality is mind. So that's what this is explaining, that the causal cause of all things is a collective mind, an intelligent mind, and that we are all connected to one consciousness, one source consciousness. And we express ourselves fractally through existence, through this one great mind, the all if you just want to simplify it. So everything that is taking place is a manifested result, is an effect of the mental aspects of the universe, which I would define as, you know, the one consciousness, like, uh, like I said. But when you understand this, you can really start to grasp and take hold of how you're creating things in the world. So one thing is, can you create something without first doing it in the mind? Well, no, we cannot. And that should say a lot about this principle in a simple way, that nothing can be created without mind. And we must be mindful of how this principle gives us our power back to be able to create something that's different than what we're receiving right now, uh, which is that of slavery and tyranny and suffering. So if we want to create something of peace and love and harmony, then we have to use our mind, which is connected to the higher case mind, which would be the all. Um, so when I say like our mind, I mean our monad, individuated consciousness as, as a small, you know, finite being is connected to the infinite being of the all. As we, as we start to come into union and and not be in se segregation or separation from the the higher mind the the collective mind then we can really start to use that to our advantage to create something good and we can start to use our imagination to imagine a different result and then use our willpower to actually create a different result so this kind of goes into something that i talk about every once in a while, which is the guts, the heart, and the mind. We have to have the guts to do what needs to be done. We have to have the care, which is the heart, to do it right and do it morally. And then we have to have the mind to give us the ability to create the things that we need, to see the things that we need, to imagine uh, a different way or a new way, and to really look at all the potentials and how these potentials can manifest and then choose a potential and go down that path to manifest that. And that's what I mean by being united in our task. Without understanding this first principle, we do not have an understanding of how the universe works. We do not have an understanding of how we work as uh, sentient beings here and where we come from so this principle i feel is one of the crucial that's the most crucial that's why it's number one so do you have anything to to say on that nate yeah um that was very well said and i think uh you know it's always really important to remember that our thoughts are what is you know measured in our emotions and so our thoughts and emotions are the drivers for uh, for the actions or the behaviors that we have that we manifest into the world in every way possible. That any any way that we are, any way that we behave in the world, this is what has to be understood is this first principle of mentalism. It's what has to be understood, uh, especially because it's the the principle that is going to help you grasp the rest of the principles. And, uh, you know, that's right. why these principles I, I, are in order. I like to associate it with the master key, right? Right. It's the master key, the hermetic master key that unlocks all the doors in the temple. So with this, I mean, all of them are keys, but the principle of mentalism is the master key. And um, he who grasps the truth of the mental nature of the universe is well advanced on the path of self-mastery. So this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about self-mastery. We're talking about, you know, how to uh, master thyself and utilize 
uh, the, the tools that we have access to in the universe to create a better universe. Because, I mean, once we're done creating freedom here on Earth, we have to expand. You know, we're going to expand outwardly and we need to be able to take this into the cosmos. You know, we need to be able to, uh, to spread this all the way out and create infinitely into the universe to create freedom all over the place, um, to spread intelligence as wide and as far as possible, because we do have that gift to be able to uh, create such a beautiful, beautiful condition if we live in harmony with the principles, you know? Right. And that's why when you were talking about principle as that which comes first, that's why truth is that which comes first, you know? Truth is the first principle, and to understand truth... You know, uh, one must understand the principle of mentalism because they are they are corresponding to, together because the principle principle of mentalism is not only that which could manifest, but it's that which has already manifested, which is that which is it is that which has occurred in the past and is happening currently in the present. Um, so without the master key, mastery is impossible, especially self mastery. And the student knocks in vain at the many doors of the temple. So, you know, they will no, they will get no answer back from the universe without the master key. So with it, with the master key in our possession, the student may unlock the many doors. You know, like I said, of the, of the uh, mental and psychic temple of knowledge, and that's what we really what we really need to do. And uh, this principle explains the true nature of energy and power and matter and why and how these are all subordinate to the mastery of mind. And we can also relate this principle to the crown chakra uh, in the Vedic understanding. So it's the highest of the high uh, within the being's chakra system. And it has to do with unity, awareness, and, and uh, you know, the, the creation or the universe, uh, the, the universe of things, you know, the creation of the universe. So right. I mean, it's the it's the true sense of we're all in this together. Right. That's completely right. And, and I like to say that it's about getting away from illusion, the illusions of mind. I mean, that's what this whole show to me is about, is getting out of the illusion. Stop lying to ourselves, you know, right. to, to start to speak the truth no matter what, to um, be unwavering when it comes to our resolve, when it comes to defending the truth, and to understand uh, the natural law principles that allow us to be able to, you know, live in harmony with each other to actually show kindness and and you know build without infringing upon any sentient being in the entire cosmos because you know if there's other sentient beings out in the cosmos we and we need to go in contact with them i mean you know not that i'm you know saying that we're going to do that anytime soon or i'm just saying as a potential or whatever then uh then you know, we, we need to not be infringing upon any sentient beings. Um, so for those who do concur with interdimensional beings and, you know, extraterrestrials and things like that, I mean, these principles are very important to have because not only will it give us the power to defend against any kind of uh, foreign, uh, uh, you know, violence, uh, but also it will give us the principles to be able to spread the knowledge of how we create freedom and how we create a society of love, a society based in love. Right. It's a, it's about understanding that we have the power to build heaven on earth. And uh, we also have the power to build hell on earth. So, yeah, the principle of mentalism is very, 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 very important. And um, the, the second principle is correspondence, which I find to be one of the most amazing things you could ever understand. Because it is, uh, it is one of the most neat things you could ever see within yourself that you see in the universe. So the principle states that as above, so below, or so it, what is that that is above is likened to that which is below, and that which is below is likened to that which is above. I wanted to say that a little better, but this principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. The old hermetic uh, axiom ran in these words, as above, 
so below, as below, so above. And the grasping of this principle gives one the means of solving many a dark paradox and hidden secret of nature. There are planes beyond our knowing, but when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much that would otherwise be unknowable to us. This principle is the universal application and manifestation on the various planes of the material, mental, and spiritual universe. It is a universal law. The ancient uh, Hermeticist considered this principle as one of the most important mental instruments by which man was able to pry aside the obstacles which uh, hid from view the unknown. So, the, you know, we're going to definitely be getting into the occult. Its use even tore aside the veil of Isis to the extent that a glimpse of the face of the Egyptian goddess might be caught. Just as a knowledge of the principles of geometry enables man to measure distant suns and their movements while seated in his observatory, so a, a knowledge of the principle of correspondence enables man to reason intelligently from the known to the unknown. Studying the monad, he understands the archangel. So the universe is basically holographic and also lives within us, the individual. The universe and the individual are basically just micro and macro reflections of each other. It's really, you know, to me, it's like one of the most beautiful displays of nature's spiritual mirrors. You know, that's what I like to call it. And once we know and understand the inner workings of ourselves, then we have the key to better understand the universe. And it works uh, similarly with the learning. When, when we are learning the universe, we can learn about the consciousness in the individual. So both can both cannot be separated. They, they definitely work as one. What this principle reveals in such a beautiful way is it reveals the occult or the hidden knowledge of the universe. So the individuated consciousness is how the microcosmic world works. And then the micro or the macro cosmic world is natural law. And that's really, really important to understand. So let me just say that one more time. The individuated consciousness is how the microcosmic world works. And then the macrocosmic world is natural law. Also, another way to understand is through observing similar fractal patterns and things like the calyx swirl on someone's head resembles a hurricane, which resembles a galaxy, which also looks like a, a artichoke flower or some kind of, you know, like an aloe plant. You can check out a really cool short video called Powers of Ten, which really demonstrates the principle very well. And it's basically uh, one of like a it's like a, a long shot, like one shot video of zooming all the way out into the cosmos and then zooming all the way into, you know, all the way back into, you know, like where it's zooming down on Earth and all the way down, down onto the land into a person laying down on the ground into their hand, like into the cells of their hand at the subatomic level. It's really, really cool. And it uh, does a great job of showing how it's uh, self-similar across all scales. And that's really, really fascinating. Uh, one, one more thing I wanted to say is there's a really awesome quote that I think describes this very well by uh, one of the greatest philosophers of all time, Alan Watts. And he says, you are a function of what the whole universe is doing the same way that a wave is a function of what the whole ocean is doing. And I think that really sums it up. That's beautiful. What uh, the principle of correspondence is. Yeah, I completely agree. The principle of correspondence to me is uh, the first thing that has that has happened to the collective self once it becomes self-aware. So when the being 
that we could call the one great spirit, the mind, you know, coming off of the, the idea of the one collective mind, the all. When it becomes self-aware, now we have correspondence. And like you said, it's a mirroring. It's, a, it's about uh, reflectiveness of, you know, self-knowledge, of self-awareness. And that happens fractally, like you're talking about, how everything is self-similar. And this is where we can get more understanding about how our intelligence works also. Because without self-reflection, then how can we truly say that we could uh, ever be intelligent beings? How could we be sentient beings? How could we be conscious beings? Well, we can't. So this principle is foundational for our level of consciousness to come into manifestation. Um, you know, I mean, I think you said it the best, but one more thing I can add in here is that the correspond the correspondence principle is directly related to the third eye. And that does play into what I was just speaking about with self-reflection uh, and, uh, and looking at the truth and perceiving reality as it is and aligning our perceptions with reality. Um, and I know that can be very difficult for a lot of people because everybody thinks perception is reality, but it's not. It's a component of reality and it's a tool for you to be able to align to that which is. But correspondence is also one of my favorite principles, not that there should be a favoritizing of any of these principles, but we use it so much, you know. And considering that Hermes is the, is the you know, second, it's, it's the first planet that's the closest to the sun. So we could, we could look at Hermes as correspondence, the one who brings correspondence, the messenger of the gods, you know, mm -hmm. because without that reflection, without that observation, then we would gain no knowledge. We would have no ability to understand anything about who we are or about the realm in which we live, because we're living in a giant body in a way, a giant mind, like, the first principle states and it's fractally self-reflective so you know i mean there's endless wonders here for us to discover just because we understand natural law or these seven principles doesn't mean that somehow we've perfected all of our knowledge and there's no more mysteries for us to find exactly. out well, that's that's ridiculous right <laughs> right yeah and you know and uh, one of the um really awesome correspondences that I've ever come to understand was, uh, you know, uh, Mark Passio did a really awesome uh, presentation that I ended up kind of um, using that information and, and expanding on, on it, which is the earth brain. And I think it's really, really cool uh, and fascinating and, you know, um, very important to, to say the least is, that we, that our minds, that our brains are literally a direct correspondence, a direct mirror of the earth, you know, because when you understand you have two hemispheres of your brain and there's two hemispheres of the earth, you know, as, especially when you're talking about the, the North Pole and the South Pole. And then you talk about, you know, what we're going to get into in the next principle, which is the principle of polarity. And... Um, Anyway, like, it's a very, very big eye-opening uh, correspondence, and I'm not going to get into it here, but I definitely highly recommend you check out the work of uh, Mark Passio with the Earth Brain, and also I did my presentation called Earth Brain and the Corresponding Symbolism, and uh, we, we both uh, get into some really deep, um, important correspondences that really help us understand the world that we live in at a very very deep level and, it, and it's definitely occulted information so uh, definitely check those out and if you want to further your understanding which i highly recommend because it's a it's a really powerful topic i completely agree with you um the the next uh principle though is vibration all right, we're going to take a break. Uh, I got to rotate the fire and we will be right back. Thank you if you made it this far. And don't forget if you go to w.gg and use the code Beagle Live Vision, you get 10% off. Thank you.